What is happening guys? It is Rules for Rebels and in today's video I'm going to be breaking down the Trezor hardware wallet against the Nanner, uh, Nanner, <laughs> Nanner, 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 against the Nano Ledger wallet. Now this isn't meant to be like a fully, totally encompassing every little thing about each uh, hardware wallet. It's kind of more the main points that I was considering when I was deciding between these two wallets. Um, and I've seen a lot of like frequently asked, commonly asked questions coming up in regards to these two wallets. Um, so that's kind of why I wanted to make this video. I think in this video I have uh, seven points that I, I think are important to distinguish between these two wallets, different functions or features that may be worthwhile to you. So I don't, I think both of these are decent wallets. Um, I was strongly considering buying both these. I wound up buying the Trezor. I may wind up putting in a pre-order for the Ledger, uh, which is not going to ship until September 4th. Um, but I think I'm probably going to wind up getting both of them. I think they're both good wallets, but different people have different reasons for wanting one. Some people don't like that on the Ledger, on the Trezor, you can't export or can't view your private keys on the ledger you can um, the treasure has some pros that some people may like over the ledger so that's kind of what you know I got kind of seven points that I want to uh, mention that may be important reasons to buy one wallet versus the other now a lot of people are looking to get hardware wallets right now because of the potential August for a split it looks like that's not gonna happen even though most of the Bitcoin miners and hash power and all this stuff is signaling not to split um, I guess this Jihan Wu guy could potentially still split off anyway. The coin will most likely be kind of an insignificant coin, but nonetheless, some people want to be in control of their private keys if something like that does happen. And the August 1st date seems to be less important now, but what, what could be important is in November, I guess there's another potential Bitcoin split, um, which is going to be split, which potentially could split into like a one block, block Bitcoin versus a two block Bitcoin. That's a little bit over my head, so I'm not gonna try to get into explaining it, but just wanted to mention that because these are some of the reasons why a lot of people are wanting to get into hardware wallets. Now, if you're storing your Bitcoins on Coinbase, you may wanna rethink that. It's not a great idea to store your coins on an exchange. If you are gonna use an exchange, I think Coinbase is probably one of the, I know there's a lot of complaints about people getting their accounts locked down and customer service is terrible and they're really slow at getting back to you and there's no 800 number to call. You have to submit an email ticket which might take them six weeks to get back to you. So Coinbase isn't perfect, but in terms of exchanges, I do feel like your Bitcoins are pretty safe on there. If you leave your Bitcoins uh, on Coinbase and Bitcoin does happen to split, it's not as if you're gonna be left with nothing. Coinbase is basically gonna choose for you which coin that they're gonna follow. I think after the fact, they may wind up letting you cash out your Bitcoin Cash or your Bitcoin ABC anyhow. However, Coinbase has said, if you're concerned about that, get your Bitcoins off the exchange. Coinbase does offer a vault, which is, I guess, a cold storage option, and they also offer a multi-signature vault uh, where you control two out of three of your private keys. I haven't personally used that one, though I have used the Coinbase vault. And one thing I've been noticing a lot on Reddit and YouTube and stuff is there are a lot of people who are still storing their coins on Coinbase. Obviously, a lot of the really smart people in the room when it comes to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies say storing your coins on an exchange is the worst idea in the world, the worst thing you can possibly do. And you're asking them to be stolen. You don't really own your own coins if you don't hold the private keys, etc., etc., etc. And while that is all true, uh, well, that is all true. I do think that Coinbase is a, a, a step or two above the rest of the exchanges. You know, if you're storing your bitcoins on some Russian exchange or Chinese exchange that doesn't require any information for you and isn't regulated, like I know a lot of people do that to avoid taxes and things like that. And you know, that, that's totally your prerogative, I guess. Uh, but keep in mind, those exchanges probably aren't going to be as safe or as reputable as a Coinbase. And also a lot of these hacks we talk about back in the day with like Mt. Gox and Bitfinex, I, I think of, of, Bit, of Coinbase as being kind of a higher caliber of exchange than those guys. So uh, without further ado, let's get into this. So reason number one, um, and this is gonna be kind of some pros or cons about the Ledger and or Trezor. Like I said, I think both wallets are great wallets. Um, however, like I said, I do think there are some points that may sway some people to one or over the other. So with the Ledger, you can view your private keys with the Trezor, you cannot. Um, now, people, Trezor and people who use the Trezor say, look, you don't need to know your private keys. Like if Bitcoin were to split or whatever else, you can always use your seed on a wallet that supports both Bitcoin chains and you'll be able to recover your original Bitcoin as well as your Bitcoin Cash or your Bitcoin ABC. Uh, so it's not really a concern. One thing that gets a little bit complicated to me, so let's say Bitcoin does split August 1st, we wind up with a Bitcoin Cash and a Bitcoin Core or original Bitcoin, whatever. Now, if I go put my, 
I won't say private keys because I can't see my private keys, but if I go put my seed from my Trezor into a Bitcoin wallet <coughs> that supports both, I don't want to move my original Bitcoin, my Bitcoin Core and the Bitcoin Cash over there. I only want to move over the Bitcoin Cash. Basically, if Bitcoin splits, I'm going to consider the original Bitcoin to be Bitcoin. The other one to me is going to be like an Ethereum Classic, something that splits off. And I'm basically just going to cash it out immediately. Um, <laughs> and put it into the original bitcoins however i really you know i don't like having to unnecessarily move my coins around um so personally i wouldn't really like if, if i have to move my keys or put my seed on electrum or some other uh some other wallet i don't want to move both bitcoins i just want to move one and i don't know if that's possible using the trezor with the ledger you can actually extract your private keys and you could just go enter your private keys into a wallet that supports Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin ABC. And I believe you could do that without moving both chains over to that wallet. So that's, that's one point that may be worthwhile. A lot of people say like, I guess your seed is derived from your private keys or vice versa. So, you know, some people get hung up on the fact that they can't view their private keys. Uh, Trezor, however, says, and a lot of smart people with Bitcoin say that, look, it doesn't matter as long as you have your seed, um, you're good to go. Um, so that that's the one point. If you want to be able to extract or view your private keys, go with a ledger. Um, but really, it's, it's kind of a non-issue. Number two, the ledger is on back order until September 4th. So I was able to get the Trezor right away. Uh, the Trezor cost me 89 euros. If I'm not mistaken, that might be the normal price. I want to say there was like an 18 euro convenience fee for getting it faster because even the Trezor is back ordered, but they are still shipping and you pay the extra. So I think maybe potentially, um, if you're willing to wait, the Trezor may be 18 euros uh, cheaper. I'm not positive about that, but basically I paid 89 euros for the Trezor, 26 euros for DHL shipping from the Czech Republic. And I think within less than 72 hours after ordering, I had my Trezor in hand. For me personally, uh, time was kind of of the essence. I wanted to get my Trezor uh, sooner rather than later. Um, so I wasn't willing to wait for the Ledger Nano S to come out. You can buy the Ledger Nano S on Amazon or eBay, but you're going to pay upwards of $300 for a device that in reality costs like 58 euros um, so that's kind of one of the things that swung me over to the Trezor um, yeah number three another thing I wanted to bring up there is going to be a Trezor 2 coming out before the end of the year I know a lot you know it, it kind of sucks when you're like hey I bought PlayStation 1 and then like a, a month after you buy it PlayStation 2 winds up coming out and you're like oh crap I should have waited or you buy like the Samsung S6 and then three weeks later the S7 comes out so if you're somebody who likes having the newest device there is a Trezor 2 that's going to be coming out before the end of the year we don't really have a release date when it's going to be coming out it will be out before the end of the year it's going to have a touch screen uh, it's going to have a faster processor although the Trezor 1 is perfectly fast in terms of processing um, what else does it have I believe you might be able to manage or handle your own private keys as well with the Trezor 2 uh, don't quote me on that but I do believe I heard that you'll be able to to, there'd be some function or feature to export your private keys. So if that's important to you, that should put the ledger and the treasure on a level playing ground. But again, according to most people, it's kind of a non-issue. Um, number four, the Ledger Nano S holds more alt currencies than the Trezor. The Trezor supports Bitcoin Dash, Zcash, Litecoin, and some 20 other Ethereum-based coins, whereas the Ledger, Ledger Nano S supports Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Doggy Coin, Dash, Zcoin, Ripple Status, Komodo, and a crap load of other uh, Ethereum-based currencies. Um, so the Ledger holds more currencies. That's kind of why I was initially leaning towards the... Um, ledger uh more currencies and that's one thing i wanted to talk about real briefly is i feel like uh you know okay i've, I've wrapped my head around storing my bitcoins um i have not moved my ethereum um off of the places that i currently had it just because i'm hearing about a lot of hacks and things like that with people using this my ether wallet and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of these altcoins run off of my Ether wallet as well. So I've been a little bit hesitant to use that. Uh, but one thing that's kind of fusing, confusing, I think, to a lot of new users is I think a lot of us wish that, you know, for those of us who are holding 20 altcoins or 30 altcoins or 50 altcoins, I think we wish there was one place that we could store them all. And while there are, I believe, some software wallets that don't necessarily hold all of them, but will hold a lot of them, 
I don't know, to me it just seems overwhelming and kind of a hassle having to get like a different wallet for every little single alt currency that I'm messing with. Um, so that is one pro to me that the ledger holds so many currencies. Um, the treasure is getting better and I think they will uh, roll out and hold more currencies in the future. Um, but if holding as many alt currencies as possible or being able to store more, more alt currencies um, on your hardware wallet is important to you, um, I would say it may be worthwhile to get the ledger. Um, let's see, uh, price point, the Ledger Nano S is 58 euros, the Trezor is 89 euros. Uh, the Ledger is a bit cheaper, however, in the grand scheme of things. Um, you know, this is device is probably going to last you years and years and years, if not a lifetime. Um, you know, it's not something you're probably like, you know, it's not like a zip drive or something or a mouse where you're plugging it in every day. Like you're only plugging it in to use your Bitcoins. Uh, if you're somebody who's kind of storing your Bitcoins or using Bitcoin as a store of value, um, I don't think you're really going to be wearing out the plug or anything like that. So, I mean, this device is going to be with you for a while. It's going to be responsible for holding hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, potentially even millions of dollars, depending on how many Bitcoins you hold and where Bitcoin price goes. Um, so really, I don't think a 30 uh, euro difference in the price point should really sway you one way or the other. If you like one more than the other, if you feel one is more more secure than the other, um, etc., go with the one that you want. Don't you know? Don't let 30 euros, which is what 35, 38 dollars, um, sway your decision. Um, and then. And lastly, uh, both of these seem very, uh, price point, oh, well, I'm sorry, so number five was the ledger price point versus the treasure price point. Number six, so the treasure, and, and I, I don't really have the technology to fully explain this, but the treasure is completely open source, and I believe not based on like a central server or something like that. The ledger, and again, I don't really know how to fully explain this, but basically, the ledger is more dependent on the company behind it than the treasure is. So the treasure, I think, is kind of independent of Satoshi Labs, whereas the ledger is somewhat reliant on, I don't know if it's a ledger company who makes it, but the ledger apparently is a little bit more reliant on the parent company than the treasure. And then uh, that's number <coughs> number six. <coughs> number seven is user friendliness, intuitiveness, etc. So I. I've only personally used the Trezor. I have watched YouTube videos on how to set up the ledger, how to use the ledger, as well as how to set up the Trezor, treasure, how to use the Trezor. Um, and just from watching both videos, uh, like I said, I only have experience using the Trezor. Both of them seem very user friendly, uh, very intuitive, very easy to use. However, I will say from watching videos and part of what kind of swayed my decision, the Trezor to me seemed a little bit more intuitive, a little bit more user friendly, uh, a little bit more easy to use. And that's one other thing that kind of swayed me towards the Trezor. So uh, that's the video, guys. I know I've, who, who, who'd have thought I could have rambled on for 13 minutes about this topic. But uh, like I said, I'm not really trying to make a completely comprehensive guide to both these wallets. Just those are kind of the seven points that I've seen a lot of people asking questions about online. And those seven points were things that were kind of important to me or things that I wondered about or had a preference for one way or the other. Uh, so I wanted to get this video out about that. I will be making another kind of Bitcoin update video. There's a few new altcoins uh, that have kind of come on my radar that I've either bought, have on my watch list, my buy list, or I'm going to be keeping an eye on. So I will be making a video in the next day or two, uh, kind of giving you guys a walk through some of those coins if you guys are looking for other coins to check out. Uh, this whole August 1st thing seems like it's going to be a non-issue, so don't freak out about it. Although uh, I would start slowly moving your Bitcoins off of Coinbase and other exchanges and to Electrum or a hardware wallet. Um, one other, I won't even get into this, uh, Bittrex made an announcement that they weren't going to be allowing um, Bitcoin transfers in or out from the 23rd on through the end of the month. It kind of had me freaked out about whether it's safe to send Bitcoins right now, but after reading some subreddits and things like that and talking to some people, it seems like it is. Confirmation times are taking a little bit longer, uh, but I think that's more based on Coinbase being bogged down than it has anything to do with the Bitcoin network. So I'm going to wrap the video up with that. If you have any questions, comments, anything, leave them in the comment section below. You enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. You want to send me some Bitcoins, I'll put my address in the uh, description box below and I will also link to the treasure and the ledger. Thanks for watching and I will catch you guys on the next video. If we don't make one before then I'll catch you for Side Hustle Tuesdays tomorrow. Later guys.